Maybe you've fallen in love with someone. You start off by wanting to be near them. That all you need is to just be in that person's presence. Just seeing them do whatever it is that they do. Just seeing them look at you and how it makes you skip a heartbeat. There's nothing like it. But then with time, it slowly kills you. You don't want to just be in their presence. You want to express everything you're feeling. But the idea of being turned down can be soul shattering. And there you are, all alone, as if no one else existed, as if the whole universe is your own. You can't stop thinking about them. And so you decide that you will say something. You will expose your feelings. You will confess your love. Time starts to pass by slowly, as if everything is in slow motion, as if you are getting ready to jump in. And then you utter those words. This is one of the single greatest moments in film history, not just because of its build-up, but also due to how this scene is wonderfully executed and sets up one of the greatest character developments ever told in a love story. Because this isn't just a love story, it's so much more than that. And to explain why, we need to talk about Naoko Yamada. I have a confession to make. I love Naoko Yamada. I love how she tells stories and how she fully uses the imagery to her advantage. Because what our director does is force us to see the little actions portrayed by each character. How it tells us so much about them. It's this subtlety that she uses that makes us feel that even the slightest of movements is the most epic thing we've ever witnessed. She makes small feel big. And Tamako Market, the anime series that precedes Tamako Love Story, is no different. Let's take episode 3 for instance. We see a new character have enormous difficulty connecting with our protagonist, Tamako. We see the build-up, we feel the tension, but all extremely subdued. Rather, it's letting us in slowly, by making us see how her body and eyes move, by making us realize how much she wants to thank Tamako for what she did. And then, when she finally does, it's breathtaking. It's like we just witnessed someone saving the world, but in reality, all we saw was someone overcome their initial fears and become friends with our main character. That's all it was. But it was the most beautiful start to a friendship I have ever seen. Because Naoko Yamada makes small feel big. And this is felt throughout the entire series. Whether it's when we learn that Tamako's father confessed to her mother through a love song he wrote for her, or how we find out that Tamako's mother passed away with just a small glimpse of a flashback of her funeral. Or how Midori isn't able to tell Tamako that she can't do something by herself. It's all so subtle, but extremely powerful. So, when we shift our attention to Mochizo, Tamako's neighbor and longtime friend, we also slowly start to get to know him more. We know he loves her. but. He just can't say it. And our main character is completely oblivious to this. We even have an entire episode where Mochizo wants to confess to her, but isn't able to do so. And it's also in this episode where we find out that someone else might also have feelings for Tamako. In what seemed to be an episode about a confession, in reality was about getting to know both Mochizo and Midori better. They love Tamako. She seems within reach but isn't. They know if they were to say something, it would change everything. Which is what Tamako Market and subsequently Tamako Love Story is all about. Change. Or rather, accepting change. And while the show never reaches its full potential, the film definitively surpasses it. Tamako Love Story can be broken down into two parts. The first half focuses on Mochizo wanting to confess, and the second half focuses on its aftermath with Tamako digesting all of this information. That's it. There is no big adventure to go on. No fantasy elements that appear out of nowhere. It's just about how these two characters deal with this situation and how others react to it. But Yamada decides to stretch these moments to its fullest. She wants us to fully comprehend what each character is going through. Because if you've ever been in their situation, you know what it's like. You know how much it consumes you, as it consumes Mochizo. 
how he has always been beside Tamako, how he witnessed our protagonist go through something truly awful, how he saw her grow, how he even used to communicate with her through a string phone, one she was never able to catch throughout the entire series. But now that high school was ending, now that he had decided to move to Tokyo, he couldn't keep in those feelings anymore. And so he starts to gain the courage to confess, to let his emotions out, to finally tell Tamako what he truly feels. And thus, we reach the beginning of this video. We reach the moment that Mochizo has been waiting all of his life. This scene is imprinted in my mind. Whether it's the visuals or the themes present, there's so much to dissect here. So let's start by breaking it down into three stages. Stage one is Mochizo trying to confess to her with how he planned everything beforehand. However, due to Tamako continuously interrupting him, he's not able to. Stage 2 is Mochizo apparently giving up on the idea and decides to walk along the stepping stones. Tamako follows closely behind him and then starts to tell him about how mochis make people so happy. Flashbacks are shown to when she used to spend time with her mom, to how a certain mochi used to make her smile, and the way she describes mochis is exactly how Mochizo sees Tamako. And now we enter stage 3. Mochizo has decided. He will tell her. But then suddenly, Tamako starts falling into the river. Mochizo is just able to catch her. However, he doesn't let go of her arm. In fact, he tightens his grip. It's here when Tamako starts to realize what might be happening. It's here when he will finally profess those words. What I love about all of this is just how real this all feels. The colors used. The framing of shots that focus on little things, like Mochizo's reflection when he waits for Tamako to step in. Or when he grabs Tamako before she falls, we see a close-up of his grip tightening. How the camera trembles ever so slightly on Tamako's face when Mochizo begins to tell her. How her eyes twitch. How the stepping stones resemble the progression of both of their lives. How Mochizo is moving forward. But Tamako suddenly finds herself stuck in time when she hears those shocking words. And how all of this is beautifully contrasted with the sunset. Not only to make this scene incredibly gorgeous and melancholic with its orange tone, but also portraying time passing by. Because what just happened can never be reverted. And Tamako has difficulty in acknowledging this truth in the second half of the film. Because this isn't just anime, this is filmmaking at its finest and rivals with some of the best love stories ever made. Whether it's the existing tension felt in in the mood for love or the awareness of what real love truly is in the before trilogy or even the amount of sacrifice and selflessness found in Casablanca, all of these love stories have something to say that goes beyond the notion of love itself. It's about the characters, their situations, and how each one deals with it. It can be about a fantastical world that slowly starts to be chipped away. It can be between two married people who inevitably feel something for one another. Or about how one decides to let go of the love he truly wants. There are so many love stories, so many to connect with, through its wonderful imagery, through its engaging characters, or just through a conversation that lasts for an entire film. Because it's through love that we gain some sort of connection, something meaningful, something that goes beyond our reasoning. It's not about getting that kiss. It's not about being someone's boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife. It's about sharing yourself with that other person. And hopefully that other person is able to do that too. Which is exactly what Mochiso desires. And Tamako is faced with that reality. Because change is never easy. Especially for someone who is forced to do so. She needs things to stay the same. She needs to feel happy as if time has stopped. But the whole world around her isn't stopping. People are thinking about what to do next in their lives. And Tamako is still stuck in her little world, in her little market. Yes, it's personal to her. Yes, she loves everyone there and they love her too. But one day, things will change and so will she. Or maybe she has begun to change already. She feels something. She knows there is something inside her and scares her. 
and suddenly, just like Mochizo, she finds herself all alone, as if the universe was her own. It might seem easy for us viewers to simply want Tamako to trust her feelings, but when you've gone through a massive change in your life, you are scared to let it happen again. You know how difficult it was to get through those painful days, to want that person again by your side, and you don't know how to smile anymore. You forget what happiness feels like, until one day, something made you smile again. Someone made you smile again. That smile on the mochi, it was Mochizo who was holding it. He was there beside her all along and finally looks at him without fear. She's beginning to recognize the reality in front of her. She's beginning to understand what she is feeling. In life, I've learned something truly valuable. No matter who we are, if we want something, we must fight for it. But we can't fight for it alone, especially when it concerns other people. Many films demonstrate one person fighting for another, but Tamako Love Story goes beyond that. It's not about one person fighting for someone else, it's about both fighting for each other. Our protagonist comes to that realization when she suddenly listens to an unexpected song, one that was written by her mother, one where she also confesses to her father. It doesn't matter if she can't sing well, all that matters is the intent behind it, and how she reciprocates it in the exact same way. Tamako is not just accepting change, she will now fight for it. But there is more to this love story. There is also another I need to mention, one that is crucial for the outcome of this story. After Tamako prepares everything for a confession, Midori tells her that Mochizo isn't coming to school, and the reason was he was moving early to Tokyo on that precise morning. Completely stunned, Tamako runs off to the train station to catch him. However, we find out later that it was a lie. He wasn't moving to Tokyo. He was simply visiting the college that he would attend to after high school ended. But Midori knew that Tamako needed that extra push, and it was also her way of moving on. She has also been with her since the very beginning. She was also there when Tamako lost her mother. She also knows so much about our protagonist. But as much as Midori wants more, she knows Tamako wants someone else. Because this isn't just a love story about two people getting together. It's also an unfulfilled one. And the way she accepts this is simply letting our protagonist go. It hurts so much, but it's something that she needed to do and smiles towards the future ahead of her. And thus, our story ends with a final confrontation between Tamako and Mochizo, with our main character running towards him, feeling that burning sensation, taking those necessary steps forward. And then, when she gets there, she yells for him. Mochizo can't believe what is happening. She gives him their strength phone. He throws it back to her, and for the first time ever, she catches it, and blurts out the following words. It's here where Mochizo does the most incredible thing I've ever seen in a love story. He puts his hand on his mouth as if he's about to cry. And so, our film ends. The reason why I love this reaction by Mochizo so much is because I know I would react in the exact same way. To have the one you love come up to you in that manner and finally say what you've always wanted to hear. It's not about being cool or trying to hide your feelings, it's about being honest with yourself. In fact, he did this exact same thing earlier in the series when Tamako remembered his birthday. It's not something shown that often in these stories, but it's one I highly appreciate. And I feel that the only person that is able to illustrate this so perfectly is Naoko Yamada. She understands emotions are the same for everybody, whether it's Tamako, Mochizo or Midori. It doesn't matter who we are. All that matters is what we feel and how we express those feelings. I relate to these characters so much. They remind me of my own experiences because you will never go back to those younger days of meeting that person, of spending time with them, of getting to know them better and them getting to know you better too. Those innocent days 
are gone. Because it's still the same old story, no matter what the future brings. I too have confessed my love, more than once. I have had moments where I was faced with these emotions coming out as words. And I knew that once I uttered those words, there was no turning back. Sometimes it changed for the better, and I was happy for a very long time. But there were other instances that hurt immensely. Instances where I knew that saying something would lead to nothing. But they were words that needed to be said. Because as long as we live, we face moments like these, forcing us to change, to grow, for the better. Sometimes we're Mochizo and Tamako, other times we're Midori. I've been on both sides, and I loved every minute of it. Because this film isn't just a love story. This is the perfect love story. This is our love story. Thank you for watching my video. I thoroughly enjoyed talking about Tamako Love Story and so it would mean a lot to me if you could hit that like button. And if you want more content like this, I would be forever grateful if you could subscribe. My channel truly means nothing without you. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.